In this video, we're going to be discussing what liner protrusion is, what counter bores are, and why it is so important to know what these are when rebuilding a diesel engine. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and today we're going to be talking about a very exciting subject, counter bores and liner protrusion. Okay, maybe it's not that exciting, but it is very important, and the reason I've decided to make this video is because I never got training on it when I took courses or when I was learning as a mechanic, I've just kind of picked it up as I've gone, but it's something that's very important, and if you're having a rebuild done, especially on a C15, you might be getting charged for having counter bores cut and liner shims installed. And if you're a mechanic and doing a rebuild on any engine with cylinder liners, it's very important to understand this as well. Okay, so first I wanted to say thank you to James and Jason who have sent donations since the last video at adeptape at yahoo.com. And on to the video. So what you're looking at here is a C15 engine with the head removed and the liners installed with no seals on them to check liner protrusion. And you can see the liners just kind of sit on the deck. And then when the spacer plate's installed, you're going to measure your liner height. Now, this is the inspection sheet from CAT for a C15 or 3406. And you can see the specs here. It used to be between one and six thousandths of liner protrusion, but now it's three and a half to six thousandths if you're using the counter bore shims, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. Now, if you do not check your liner protrusion, you know, What's going to happen to your engine the first thing when it fires up? Okay, so maybe that's not exactly what would happen to your engine, but this is what you're looking at what will happen if your liner sinks or your liner protrusion is wrong. Do you see the firing in this head gasket, how it is discolored and burned? If you zoom up, in on it here enough um, you'll see that it's actually burned through and usually it'll crack and over time it'll actually blow out and then you'll start getting compression into your cooling system most likely now getting back to the sheet here we're going to be filling that out but this is how you actually check liner protrusion this is a cat tool here but there are aftermarket versions and you can see we have the spacer plate installed and some hold down bolts installed and you're just going to slide it from the spacer plate to the liner and you're looking for the protrusion amount and we have three and a half thousand so this one is within spec and you're gonna measure it in four places each cylinder liner now with the liners removed this is what it looks like these are the counter bore shims I was talking about now new engines do not have counter bore shims this is a fix for when the liner wears into the block you'll have to cut the block and then install these which they just sit there and then the liner sits on top of them and that will account for anywhere in the block now this is the process where you're actually cutting them you can see small metal shavings there in the coolant passage and this is not cut to depth yet and this is typically what's used this is a pneumatic counterbore cutter there's also a hand version that you spin by hand uh, we usually use both. We'll use the pneumatic one for the bigger cut and then the last two or three thousandths with a hand cutter. And basically you just put an air drill to the square drive chuck there. And then this collar assembly here set your cut depth. And you basically turn that handle. There's a Allen wrench head there. You turn the handle and it adjusts the cut depth up and down. And like, you know, you're not cutting very much. The standard cut on these is 30 thousandths. So you know about the gap of your exhaust valve feeler gauge there and there's the cutting head there that's removable obviously and this is not a cat specific tool you can actually put different cutting heads on this tool okay so now that you know what liner protrusion is let's discuss why it's so important so obviously you don't want the liners at different heights or one part of the liner sitting lower than the other that's usually what happens on c15s is one part will actually sink due to block wear and it'll blow out your head gasket as you saw in the picture and those can get pretty bad and 
a blown head gasket, especially the firing, will have the same symptoms usually as a cracked cylinder head. So you're gonna have to pull the head, and then you're gonna have to install a new head gasket. But if your liner protrusion's off, you can't just install a new head gasket. It will blow very soon because the gap is different. And the reason the liner protrusion matters so much is that you need uniform crush of the fire ring along the liner. Now, CAT has different specs on some of their engines. The C13, you want liner protrusion between two and seven thousandths. On the C15s, you want it between one and six thousandths. And that's very important because on a liner engine, it's not squishing against the block, it's actually squishing against that liner there. And that's really the important reason you need to know why counterboards have to be cut sometimes and why liner protrusion is so critical. So the next time you're having a rebuild done or you're doing a rebuild, if you're a mechanic or an owner operator doing your own work, um, please do liner protrusion. Um, it's a very important thing to check and it doesn't really take that long to do. A CAT makes kits for checking liner protrusion, but also Cummins does. OTC even makes a kit. I'll show you a picture here. Their kit's quite a bit cheaper than the uh, CAT kit. The CAT kit's like $600 if you're not a CAT employee. Um, as you can see, the OTC one was a lot cheaper than that. Um, so I hope this helped you understand more what liner protrusion is, why you have to cut counterbores at times, and why it's so important. All right, thank you for watching the video.